Well, it obviously has a, a long ways to go in that process. I think the Republican Party, um, and specifically the Republican National Committee, issued a, almost a 100-page report at the beginning of this year to address many of the weaknesses that were obviously evident uh, in the last election, and most notably, uh, the lack of support among women uh, for Republican candidate, uh, candidates across the board. So I think that it is going to be critical for them to develop a strategy uh, to appeal to women. And it can't be just on the basis of communication. That is important. But secondly, it's also the policies um, in which uh, they will have uh, to develop uh, to appeal to women, to working women, to women uh, at home and across the spectrum on a number of issues, uh, whether it's on the economy, whether it's on social issues, that I think that the Republican Party has been far too harsh uh, in recent years, most especially, uh, and uh, to address some of these critical problems that ultimately has contributed to the significant gender gap. I mean, we lost, um, you know, Mitt Romney as a presidential candidate lost um, women support, and President Obama won women by 11 percentage points, and women make up, you know, more than half the electorate in this country. So, very important uh, for women to try, uh, for Republicans to address this question. Well, it's certainly uh, become worse. Um, I recognized uh, how bad it was uh, in my re reasoning for departing the United States Senate. I mean, I reflected. On, on that uh, dynamic, and that was the catalyst uh, for my decision. Not so much about the fight, because um, I think it's always important to fight uh, for your ideas, but uh, most critically was the fact that we were no longer governing and building a consensus uh, to work towards solutions uh, to the problems facing this country. And that's what I deeply regretted about the transformation um, of the legislative process into one that was much more political and partisan, uh, that led to the gridlock and the dysfunction that ultimately manifested itself in the, in the recent shutdown and the potential for another debt ceiling crisis. Um, I, you know, recognized uh, years ago uh, that it was becoming much more partisan, uh, but most especially in my last years uh, in the United States Senate. It was no longer about solving problems. It was more about advancing the agenda for political parties, and certainly to the detriment of our country, because we failed to address the key and significant issues uh, that continue to grip this country, such as the lack of jobs and the poor subpar economic growth that we continue to experience. Probably both. Uh, for those who are in a mindset uh, to work across the political aisle, which we need more of, both in the House and in the United States Senate. You can't make the Senate or the Congress work in the final analysis if, if senators and members of, of the U.S. House of Representatives aren't prepared to work across the political aisle. So clearly, uh, we need to uh, rethink uh, you know, who we support uh, and also to put an emphasis and value on bipartisanship and compromise and consensus. That's why I advocate independent redistricting commissions, because I think that would change uh, the dynamic and break up these non-competitive congressional seats across the country, which are dominant now, to the point that there are very few toss-up seats. And secondly, open the primaries, so we have less ideological candidates, more centrist and more moderate-based candidates from the center right or from the center left than these primaries are now producing. Third, I think we do have to have procedural changes. We should have a five-day work week, for example at least three out of four weeks out of the month. I understand the value of returning home to visit you with your constituents and, you know, attend or, uh, events. But at the same time, it is important for senators and members of the House to be there in Washington in a full work week to concentrate on the very complex issues facing this country. And finally, I think we should have biennial budgets and work on, you know, the Congress hasn't passed a budget in four years. It's hard to imagine the largest economy in the world has been operating and functioning without a budget. But that's been true because they failed to uphold their obligations um, as members of Congress. So I would advocate, you know, having a budget every two years, then they can do more oversight and also to pass the appropriation bills that obviously they didn't do this year and that led to a government shutdown.